Okay, persistent enterovirus infection, cervicogenic vertigo to the exclusion of both peripheral and central vertigo, cervical cranial instability, C1, C2, ALR ligament damage, four to five millimeter overhangs with side bending, uh, C2, three anterior longitudinal ligament damage, uh, about four millimeter retroalesthesis and extension, retroalesthesis of C4, C5, C5, C6, suspected intracranial hypertension, uh, and you did great with what we did. Yeah. All yeah. right, so let me show you what we found. All right. Um, and I think it's great. You've gone all over the country and seen a lot of doctors. Uh, you're clearly, uh, you're an engineer, so uh, you, you've sought out some really good guys here. Yeah. Okay, so this is what we found that was being missed. Um, and this is just you in the neutral position. You can see the, the calcified thyroid cartilage is rotated, indicating that the anterior compartment is twisted. And the trauma was passing out, landing face first, well, actually the right side of the face first. So you mm -hmm. woke up with your face turned to the left, and th so the trauma was knocked everything to the left. At least that's what we find here. Correct. Uh, so the hyoid bone is in a misaligned position. It's uh, uh, just external to the external carotid. Uh, anyway, uh, let's show some of the rest here. Yes, you have elongated styloids, uh, but they seem to be calcified in a place that don't seem to be giving you trouble unless you bring your head down. Uh, one of the other things we noticed here, oh, let me bring this out of the way, is that your your scalings, you got a bobblehead going on here, so, which, which is what we find when the scalings are turned off. So uh, a lot of guys are trying to pay, figure out the scalings. Well, here's, here's the problem that I'm finding. Uh, now you've got it on both sides. It, it's it's better when you see it to where the one first rib is down about halfway and the other one is up in the normal position. Mm -hmm. But in your case, both are down, uh, displaced, uh, the left one being the most, most so. And since the first and second scaling attaches to the first rib and this thing is moving too much or, or dislodged, uh, I don't expect you to, to modulate those scalings and I expect a bobblehead. Um, we did examine you today and, or yesterday and there was it, it kind of gave and then it kind of tightened back up again. Uh, so how you're compensating, uh, I don't exactly know, but uh, so what do I want? I, I want these to not be loose like that. Um, it would be nice for somebody to go in there and tighten those up hmm. um, until we have a way of actually reducing them and putting them in the perfect position, but that's, that's good for now. Um, what else did we see? Let's bring this over here, center. Be on the center here. Uh, well, we did find a deviated septum, but that's not in the, in the most problematic area. Uh, your spinous is to the right here. You can see that this facet is kind of telescoping forward. So, again, whoever does your prolo or PRP or, or whoever tightens you up, uh, well, actually, we'll find out why they were already trying to do that and it, and it wasn't responding like we wanted it to. Mm -hmm. Nor were you responding to people that try to do curve correction. It was choking you out. Yeah. Uh, you felt like you were choking and losing air. And you also feel that when you lie on your back. Um, let's, let's actually get to that. Uh, right, so this thyroid cartilage is calcified and going all the way up in there. And I got some great shots of that. Looks like a second hyoid. Uh, there it is. This is an aerial view. You can see how that thing has come along. Um, so I think your traumas as a child uh, caused you to calcify in a way and it didn't really manifest until you fell uh, and now your ab aberrant uh, healing process is coming into play or at least it was so uh, just by looking at this uh, what do you want to do well we found with regular whiplashes that the anterior compartment will suck back uh, muscle guarding the strap muscles whatever it is there, there's a protective thing so we did what we did with them we pulled that all out and it pops and cracks and, and, and gives, and all of a sudden it gives and there's, it's pliable and, and there's uh, more of an elastic component to it, it, it shifts. Okay, so that calcified thing, this is the thyroid cartilage, that calcified thing is gonna be called the lateral thyrohyoid ligament. It's a thickening of this, this is called a membrane, but it's ligamentous structure. Mm -hmm. um, so one of the things they'll do is they'll, uh, there's a doctor that'll fix snoring by putting four stitches between the hyoid and the thyroid cartilage. He'll attach them so it's rigid and doesn't move, and he fixes snoring that way. 
but structure affects function and this crookedness in you ha that you have in here, how it's playing out and the symptoms it's, it's fostering uh, can be a little tricky to define. Um, the good news is you got a lot better after we pulled all this out and mm -hmm. readjusted your atlas, which we'll show in a minute. Uh, yeah, it just looks like it's occupying space in there. Um, there's a good shot of the, these first ribs. Are, they're down on both sides, particularly the left side. Um, another shot of that calcified ligament. Uh, good shot of this thing being displaced about halfway down the vertebra. Uh, the facet's up there. Oh, that's comparison to the other side. This one's higher. Uh, another good shot of it, how it's displaced. All right, so showing my work, we drew a line through the center of the frame and magnum. There's your atlas. And you can see that it's more rotated than it is tilted. So we did left and right uh, rotations with the CT. And we found that your atlas slides faster to the right than it does to the left. It moves more towards a midline when you, you know, uh, anyway, so that, that seems to be the problem. Now today, or yesterday, we did a vector. We did right 30, anterior 47, which is unheard of in my field. Uh, and that's what cleared you right out. Mm -hmm. um, which is, I think, why the Lord brought you down here. Uh, another shot of the C2 rotation. There's a good shot of that C rotate, and we'll show you the x-ray before and after how that uh, reduced. Uh, of course, jugular vein uh, compression, uh, this is the dominant one. The right atlas has gone anterior. And, and we always like that toilet flush feeling when somebody gets that adjusted. The styloids, again, don't seem to be the, the one that's entrapping it. It's the atlas that's forward. Another shot. Left head rotation, we check to see how far it goes to the right. Right head rotation, you see how far it goes to the left. <clears throat> so again, I couldn't get past these first ribs. And another angle of this twisted thyroid cartilage and anterior compartment of your neck. Um, and you could breathe easier. A lot of things happened. Yes. Uh, just lying flat on the table, sleeping, uh, just from pulling this anterior compartment out. And, and what we don't see is all the nerves that run through here, the vagus nerve, uh, there's a lot of nerves that run through there that are no longer being irritated. Although hydrodissection in there to, cl to clean them up uh, to make sure there's nothing, that would be kind of nice. That would be a great experiment to do. Uh, just a good shot of the middle scalene, and there's your anterior scalene uh, first rib. Yeah, look at those suckers. Um, I've actually seen them to where one will float out, free floating. I still have to find a surgeon to help me reattach those. There's a, it's a blind spot. Um, yeah, any surgeon that's watching this that's willing to help, that would be just wonderful. These people are suffering. Um, right, so we did kind of take an inventory of, of this aberrant movement in your neck. And, uh, I think we'll show that on a different x-ray. Um, basically, mechanically, this constricture, this shortening in the, uh, in the front here is keeping your neck from going into a curve. Mm -hmm. um, and we still haven't identified all the structures in there that are in play, but the trauma, we do know the trauma, your head was turned left and you slammed flat, flat and all this got jammed. Um, anyway, but as we deal with this anterior compartment, that neck, the curve should come back. And when you turn your head to the left, basically we documented that nothing really goes into all you do is you slide forward. Mm -hmm. So this is right rotation. You would expect this to close. It's not closing, not closing. Right rotation is being done between C1, C2. It is not being done between C2, C3, C3, none of this. This one closes a little bit. That one closes. Um, yeah. I'm showing that. Oh, you're swallowing a bunch of air. We captured that. Why am I not getting any more pictures? Hmm. All right, I, I, oh, let's close this. Here's a good shot. So you can see how it wants to curve here and maybe even here, but there's a contracture, there's something in the front here, and that's mm -hmm. that all calcified stuff that we saw. Yep. Uh, and, and this is gonna be the, the ground zero for keeping you from going into a curve. 
And when they try to bring the curve back, of course, you choke out. You can't breathe mm -hmm. um, because of that that has still not been completely identified. Um, yeah, so this is before the adjustment. We have a, a C2 spinous rotated 8 degrees. This lower angle is kicking off at 3.88 degrees, almost 4 degrees, basically. And then after the adjustment, you can see it straightened right up. This reduced by 50%. Uh, lower angle went to 2 degrees from 4 degrees. The C2 spinous was rotated 8 degrees, and now it's 4 degrees. Um, so that, that's nice. Uh, anything you want to add? What should we say? <laughs> I uh, think you nailed it. I don't have anything to add. Um, it's been enlightening, and I'm grateful. So thank you. <laughs> right. The only thing we didn't really talk about was the, a lot of other symptoms because it just it's kind of laborious to talk about all the different symptoms that got better right. and try to explain how this happens. Uh, we do think there was a, a double crush, uh, yes. which is when the same nerve is inter interfered with in two locations. It becomes greater than some of its parts. A double crush of a nerve. And we right. can't do nerve conduction velocities in, in the, on these nerves in the neck, so they leave. They're unidentified and not documented, so you can't get an insurance company to treat it, pay for a treatment of anything. So, <laughs> so you're kind of there. All right. All right. Thank God. Yeah. <laughs>